Hello and welcome back to Scale JDM Reviews. And on the bench today you can see that we have the Aoshima Street Gear series EUF31, also known as the Nissan Leopard. Now this is an executive level car over in Japan. It's been given the street, the street gear treatment, which of course is the wheels, body kit, spoiler, lowered stance. And if we just turn this box around, you can see the wheels are in it which are these lovely Longchamp XR4ZKs uh, with Expedia wheel, with Expedia tyres, I should say, sorry. So, without further ado, let's have a look what's inside the box. Again, the kit is completely unstarted. It's fresh off the boat from Japan. So let's get these bags out of the way. And there we have it. So first up, let's get to the first sprue, which is... Uh, in typical street gear style, we have a hashi rear seat and a steering wheel. This is uh, obviously so that the car is going to be used for drifting or fast road, um, just to give that extra sporty feel. The, the seat is a bucket seat. It's very nicely made and still has some nice little details on it as well. Um, you could do the outside of that actually in a kind of wooden effect and keep the inside silver, very much in a classical racing um, vein, but... Um, You'd be quite surprised how many uh, Japanese kids have those sort of steering wheels in their cars. Next up, we have the chassis, and here we go. It's a very basic chassis, as you can see, not a lot of detail. Uh, it is an older chassis, it's going to have a long axle through the rear there, and it's going to have a steering set up in the front. Other than that, not much else to be reporting there. Um, again, it's a, it's a curved side kit, there's no engine detail, so there's no real reason to look underneath unless you were. Uh, Going to go crazy on detailing. Next up, we have the obligatory sandpaper. Uh, if you haven't caught any of my other videos, I'll quickly explain what this is for. Um, when you're building a car with any kind of stance or lowered suspension, what you want to do is you want to sand this thick plastic here on the edges on the top side of the wheel arches. You want to sand that away to keep it as thin as possible. And what that'll do is that will help the wheels sit better in the wheel wells and they won't be kind of forced into any kind of camera that they shouldn't really be displaying um, because they're being pushed in by the body shell. Um, once all that plastic's gone, they should sit much better, more flush, and it'll give it a nice, clean, more natural look. I'm going to go into the suspension uh, straight away. Uh, you can see at the very top of this, it says low down. So we have the upgraded brakes, um, we have the, uh, the longer spindles, and the lower suspension at the front there. Um, these two bits here are for the, uh, the chassis, so where the axle goes through it's not it's dead centre, it's slightly off to one side, so that's why one of these is shorter than the other, so you put this on either side, uh, which side it's meant to be on, and the wheel, when it's eventually in, will sit flush and sit where it's meant to be. And obviously if you've got one wheel sticking out too far and the other one's too far into the arches, you've gone the wrong way around. Okay, so what we've got here, we have got a couple of different bits here. We won't be using all the parts off this. There are a lot of optional bits. Now, at the steering wheel, you can see we've got two different steering arms here. One is slightly longer than the other. It's only very slightly, and that does depend on what the steering setup is that you're going to be using. Now, I'm guessing we're going to be using the long one because it will give us a bit more camber. Um, so we've got that, and as you can see, there are little grooves there. Now, that will actually sit inside this little device. So when the steering is turned it will click into place so it's not like a, a normal more modern Aishima kit where the wheels turn freely of their own accord um, when you turn the steering wheel it will go click 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 and that will keep it in whatever pose you decide to put it in we've got two fuel tanks in the back here we've got one with a what looks like a spare wheel well and one that comes without that um, I'm guessing this is more of a universal sprue to be fair um, because we even have what looks to be a couple of turbos up there, and I'm not entirely sure what those would be for. So um, I think I've actually had this sprue inside an A86 kit, if I'm honest. But as you can see, we have the uh, the rear suspension, we've got the trailing arms, the rear subframe, subguard at the front. And we have a, a chassis mount there. I'm guessing that's for the exhaust. Uh, and a few other bits to keep the, the chassis on the car. Okay, next up, I guess we're going to get the, the, glasses, the glass sprue out. And it's a it's a 
it's an easy one to get through um it will need a bit of a clean that glass the the kit is very very old i will say that uh even the uh the plastic started to look a little bit on the glass through so you've got the the front lights just there you've got the rear lights down here uh you've got the indicator lights and then also you've got the main uh window uh front rear and side windows uh with the matted out bits where they need to be painted okay moving on to the interior we have the uh the interior floor and the back seats molded into one piece they do look like leather seats and they do look very comfortable and uh, we obviously got the original front seats now we've got the uh hashi rear seat over near the sprue which will be used if when this kit is built by whoever decides to build it and we also have a couple of different steering wheels including a sports one just there we have the the front headlights and uh, there would obviously be glass going across those and a rear spoiler just here and the dashboard uh, with the the instrument cluster and everything there now what we've also got here is we've got the, the handbrake we've got the automatic gear shift and you can see that very well with the white box behind it you've got the rear view mirror and the grille and the steering column you've also got this little bit just here now this attaches underneath this triangular piece just here and that creates an aerial you, you tend to you tended to see these on limousines in the 80s and 90s okay so moving on to the interior this is a two-door two -door coupe so we just have the front door here We've got a speaker and it is quite nicely detailed you can tell it's an early kit because it's the, the detail isn't as sharp as a modern Aoshima kit but it is still looking pretty good and could be made uh, with just a bit of paint to, to look fantastic. Uh, we've got the single exhaust out the back, the ring mirrors and the front windscreen wipers on there also. So I'm not going to open this packet up but it, these are just the, the a normal tyres. Uh, these look like they are 18 inch. Uh, come with a set of four poly caps in there and those fit these really really nice looking long champ wheels. Um, it would be very very easy to get another set of wheels or maybe a, another set that you've had cut the fronts off those and just give these a little bit more dish um, to make them look not so standard but they are really nice looking they're obviously a split rim style uh, with the bolts around the outsides they are a female fitment as well and once on the car obviously you can have a normal ride height or you can have it nice and low they, they do sit it quite nicely to be fair right now on to the body kit so as you can see this car is quite angular uh, hence the body kit is also angular and uh, it's nicely detailed and this is the front bumper just here you've got the fog lights the uh, the air intakes where the indicators would be as well in the front bumper you have the very nice side skirts with some uh, fins just there I guess uh, I guess I don't know if those would be for showing the real car or if they would actually be um, air vents and you also have the rear wheel well uh, these would lead up to the rear bumper just like that and uh, give it that extra sporty feel of course in the center we have a number plate holder as well next up we have the uh, one piece sprue here this is just the rear spoiler and that would sit just like that basically uh, I prefer to have the car with no spoiler, but obviously it's uh, whoever decides to build this particular kit will have the choice whether to use it or not, or they could, this could actually be used on any other kit, to be fair. It's quite a universal spoiler. So, looking at the model itself, as you can see, it's a very lovely looking car. Um, we never actually got these in the UK at all, um, but there are a couple over here. They do look great and very, very retro. And to be honest, this kit is actually really nicely moulded. Um, I can't see any mould lines or any kind of prep that needs to go into it or just some on the rear bumper there but it's I can only just feel it with my with my fingers um, but I can just imagine one of these being built and then slammed to the ground uh, then a nice kind of two-tone black and gold or black and silver or something like that would would absolutely set it off a tree but yeah the, the body's flawless really nice Right, a little bit late on in the video, but we're going to hit for the decals, as you can see. Now these, as you can tell straight away, are very, very old. Um, the white decals have yellowed. 
not really anything we can do about that but it does also have the the older option style decals there uh, we've got hks trd cb for the lights we've got some decal harnesses it's in this most stickers as well castrol bridgestone it's all on there if you wanted to make it into a fast road car um, me my personal opinion is uh, keep it clean so i wouldn't be using these however to be honest if you did try and use these decals i'm not sure how they would turn out because they have obviously aged and they haven't aged very well moving on to the standard decals that come with the kit as a, as a standard leopard we have the the nissan leopard just there uh ultima which is going to be the spec level some more leopard badges the actual leopard badge for the front wheel uh, a couple of them plates the instrument cluster and the usual uh, japanese window stickers just there right onto the instructions now these instructions are yellowing just here and along the top they do look like they got wet at some point in the past um they haven't aged very well at all um, but they are in one piece which is what we can be thankful for so straight away looking at the car even in that picture looks stunning you can see how the body kit fits the uh, the front bumper the side skirts and the rear spats uh, it does look actually really really nice moving ahead we're building the front suspension um so it's showing you where to put the place the decal on the front wheel and uh, we will be using also the low down suspension for this one as well and then here is the steering wheel turning about the click 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 bit and then how to to mount the wheels and get the uh, the front subframe and everything into place we have the rear axle with the shorter and the longer part like i mentioned to you as you can see there it actually makes it uh, one whole length uh, which is equal on both sides and then you can put the brakes on on the end and fit the wheels now i did say it was going to be a metal axle going through this now on an earlier kit it would have been which is why these parts are on as you can see here we've got these little hubs which then glue onto the end of those uh, rear axle arms and then the the brakes and everything then join to those so um, they've, they've slightly modernized this older kit which is quite nice to see uh, we've got the uh, the fuel cell and the, uh, the spare wheel area just there with the exhaust and the rear subframe right moving on to the front and the back lights you can see how they want you to paint them detailed up uh, back in the days when headlight lenses had uh, light had cuts in them so they could direct the light instead of the actual headlight itself doing it for you like modern cars do you've got the side indicators and uh, the headlights the grill and then you've got the back lights on the next one windscreen wipers and then where to paint the windows and put the rear view mirror in next up we're moving to the interior uh, it's a very basic interior but it should do the job um, it would be actually really nice to maybe emboss um, uh, flock that floor uh, with embossing powder and stuff like that and give it a little bit more realism would be quite nice you've got the detail on the uh, the dashboard and the interior and then last but not least page it all comes together as you can see fitting the interior to the chassis the body to the chassis and then the body kit as I've said before in other videos, I tend to put the body kit together first, paint the whole light in one go, and then fit it. And then I know that uh, that, it's, uh, that it's all done and dusted. I don't really like putting painted parts glued onto other painted parts because they tend to fall off after a little while. So, onto the parts list. Uh, you can see that we use almost everything apart from the uh, the spindles you've got there. Obviously, a lot of these parts, like I mentioned, on the uh, on that universal a frame are not needed hence why we didn't go into them the seat there is not needed also because you have the the uh, more upgraded bucket seat in there the rear spoiler is not needed because there's a separate one and the steering wheels again because we have the upgraded steering wheel so i do hope you've enjoyed this review of the uf31 nissan leopard street gear edition if there's any other kits you'd like to see please pop them in the comments below uh, let me know what you think to the video uh, please also remember to subscribe and like the video uh, to make sure you don't miss out on any future uh, releases that I do. Uh, there will be some more uh, how-tos coming up pretty soon and I do have the Magister build to finish as well. So all exciting stuff coming up soon. 
Okay, so for me, good night and take care.